स्टूडेंट्स लॉस्ट टाइम वी वाई डिस्कसिंग द रोल ऑफ माइक्रोब्स इन ह्यूमन वेलफेयर एंड वी हैव डिस्कसड हाउ दे प्ले एन इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल इन द वेरियस एक्टिविटीज हाउ दे आर यूजफुल टू द्यूमन वेलफेयर वी हैव डिस्कसड हाउ दे प्ले एन इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल इन द इंडस्ट्रीज वी हैव ऑल्सो स्टडीड हाउ दे आर यूजफुल इन प्रोड्यूसिंग द एंटीबायोटिक्स how they are useful in producing in the food products you know, processing mainly at homes how they play an important role in the sewage treatment plants today we are going to discuss three more aspects of these microbes how they play an important role in the human welfare of these the first one is that how the microbes they play an important role in the energy production the energy which has been produced by the action of the microbes that is the biogas now let us first discuss what do we mean by the biogas biogas is the energy it is the gas which is produced by the action of the microbes on the biomass and it is considered as one of the solution to the energy crisis mostly in the rural areas regarding the composition of this biogas we will see that this biogas it is the mixture of various is a combination of various gases the various gases which are present in this biogas are methane carbon dioxide hydrogen sulfide hydrogen of these various gases the major portion of the gas that is present in the biogas that is the methane it occupies about 50 to 70% of the total volume now third step jo mr pandit that is the microbes involved the microbes that play an important role in the formation of this biogas are known as the methanogens and the two important microbes that play an important role in the production of the biogas are methanobacterium and methanococcus these bacteria these microbes they play an important role in the what we saw as the uh, digestion rather we can see they play an important role in the anaerobic digestion of the wastes that is the biological waste that is the biomass these are simply the obligatory uh, microbes these are simply the obligatory microorganisms which act anaerobic obligatory anaerobic rather these are the obligatory anaerobic microorganisms which act anaerobically on the <coughs> dung which is uh that dung that is the organic matter and converts that dung or organic matter into the gas now we will see that the dung it is evidently present in the rural area so this biogas it plays an important role in solving the energy crisis which uh, is present in our rural area these methogens or we we'll see that this biogas it can also be found in the compound yeah these methanogens they can also be found in the compound stomach of the cud chewing animals they are also found in the crop plants in the stagnant water of the crop plants or muddy water or stagnant water of the crop plant they can also be found in the activated sewage rather that is the activated sludge sewage treatment plants regarding the biogas plant how it functions this biogas plant it is a huge tank and this in this huge tank what we will see the slurry of this biomass along with the water is poured into it then by the action of these microbes by the action of the anaerobic microorganisms we will see that this uh organic matter it gets converted into the gas and then it is supplied through the pipes to the consumers in order to have the continuous supply of the gas the biomass is continuously poured into this tank sometimes we will see the human excreta is also uh, poured into it agriculture wastes they are also poured into it so these biogas plants they are mostly found in the rural areas the technique of the production of this biogas was first of all introduced by iari indian agriculture research institute and khadi and village communities which are found in india who in collaboration which have introduced the technique of this biogas plants in india 
Now the advantages of this biogas. Number first, it is a good fuel. It has got a very high calorific value and it can be used as a fuel in rural areas. It can be used for what we call as cooking. It can be used to run the vehicles. Number third, it is eco-friendly. That means it produces less pollution. Second one, that is the microbes as an biological control. Let us first go to this, what we mean by the definition. Biological control simply means that these are the agents, these are the organisms which are used for controlling the harmful pesticides which damage our crops. Now, why there is the need of the biological agents? India, India is an agriculture country. Majority of the people, they are engaged in the agriculture work. Secondly, the population of the India is continuously increasing day by day in order to have the continuous supply of the food to our ever increasing population. What we have to do, we have to increase our productivity, we have to increase our crop yield. For increasing the crop yield, what we will do, we make the use of certain substances, chemical compounds, which are known as the fertilizers, which enhance yeah, which increase the production rate so that we have got the high yield for our ever increasing population. But these uh, chemical substances or these fertilizers, they are being used from a, uh, from a long period of time. But the use of these uh, fertilizers have a negative effect on our environment first one they play an important role in and in uh, what we will see in changing yeah in polluting our environment in order to overcome that those problems that is uh, to overcome the side effects to overcome the negative effects of the fertilizers we are now making the use of these biological agents so that they can be used to increase the productivity of our crop fields. Now, the various biological agents which are used as a biological control, they can be categorized into different categories. That is the bioherbicide, that is the bioinsecticide, that is the baciloviruses. Then we have got some bacteria which are also used uh, as a biological control. Now, what are the bioherbicides? These are the organisms which are used to control the weeds, which are used to control the unwanted plants which grow in our crop field. And the technique of this bioherbicide was first of all introduced in the year 1961, where we will see by using the fungi Phytophthora palmivora. And this has been used to control the milk weed virus in the citrus orchids. Now, the latest technique which we are going to use, that is the, which we are going to use, that is the transgenic crop plants, where we will see that the genes are being introduced into, such genes are being introduced into the crops through genetic engineering so that they may be resistance to these uh, what we call as this biocontrol agents. Then we have got the bioinsecticides. Bioinsecticides are those agents which can be used to kill or to minimize the population of these insects which are going to damage our crops. The different insects which are being used to control these insects are Lady bird beetle, which can be used to control the aphids, and these aphids they play they damage our crops, mostly the mustard crops. Then we have got second one that is the dragonfly, and it are, is being used to control the population of the mosquitoes, and it is somewhat called as the mosquito hawk. There are battle viruses, these are the viruses which are being used to control the viruses which are going to damage our crops. We were discussing the bioinsecticides. Bioinsecticides are the biological agents which are used to control, which are used to 
minimize the use of these insects. After that, that is the bacillovirus. Bacillovirus are those bio control agent, biological control which are used to minimize the effect of the viruses which are going to damage our uh, what we call as the uh, crops. The most important that is the bacillovirus is the nucleo, uh, nucleopolyhydroviruses and this nucleopolyhydroviruses Johan, it is very much specific in these nucleopolyhydroviruses they play an import they are what we see they are the species specific in nature and they have got a narrow spectrum that means they do not have any negative effect on and do not have uh, no this negative effect on the other organisms or we can say those non uh, unwanted organisms also now there are some bacteria which also play an important role as a biological control for example we have got, we have got this bacteria that is the bacillus thronigosis it is the highly potent bacteria which has got the tendency to harm the insect to harm uh, the pests which are going to damage our crops this bacteria it produces a toxin that is called as the thyroside thyroside and this toxin it has when it has been injected when it has been taken by the larva of many insects it inhibits the ion transport in the midgut and thus it kills those larva thereby saving our crop from the uh, attack of the insects now after this we have got the concept of the IPM. What do you mean by the IPM? It is integrated pest management and in this integrated pest management we have to make the use of such uh, pests which can be not too much harmful but we may be in a position to control those harmful substances to control the uh, harmful uh, substances which are going to damage our crops and thus results in the crop yield. There are various methods which are being recommended for the IPM and the first one is that the, some pests or few pests they may be destroyed by the starvation method that we had to supply the food to those pests second one we had to make the use of some cultural control methods we have to follow those cultural control methods we have to follow and we have to make the use of excessive synthetic we have to minimize the use of synthetic pesticides it should be minimized third one kind that is the method that is the crop rotation and the proper sanitation practices they ought to be followed in order to avoid the plant infestation and the last one jo hum dekhenge that is the biological control method should be followed and use of chemical pesticides jo hum karenge that should be uh, minimized now after this the third one that is the bio fertilizers now what are the biofertilizers that we are going to discuss? We will discuss now, we are going to discuss this biofertilizer. First let us uh, go, we are going to what does the biofertilizer mean. Biofertilizers are the microorganisms that add to the nutrient value of our soil and it includes the bacteria, it includes the fungi, it includes the algae or some of the microorganisms which uh, help us in improving the quality which help us in improving the fertility of the soil now these biofertilizers they have been classified into various categories number first we have got the free living nitrogen fixing bacteria for example azotobacter we have got the free living nitrogen fixing cyanobacteria for example anabina for example nostoc we have got loose association of nitrogen fixing bacteria for example azospirulum we have got the symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria for example rhizobia now there are the some micro how do these uh, microorganisms how they play and how they can be used as a biofertilizer first let us discuss about this which is most well known that is this rhizobium this rhizobium it for along with it forms root nodules 
with the leguminous plants this rhizobium it forms the root nodules with the leguminous plants and fixes the atmospheric nitrogen and then converts it into the organic uh, organic form it allows what we will see it um, also has no negative effect on the soil and it improves simply it simply improves the quality and the fertility of the soil second one jo hum zyada tar istemal karte that is this azotobacter it is the free living nitrogen fixing bacteria what we will see this bacteria it not only improves but it also supplies certain antibiotics and growth substances to the soil then we have got the mycorrhiza it is a symbiotic association with the fungi and the roots of some higher plant they play an important role in building up the uh, what we call as the soil to get in binding up the soil together second one and it improves the activity of the microbes it also helps the plant to survive under various environmental stresses now there are some importance of these bio fertilizers number first they are the eco friendly that means they do not pollute our environment as we will see regarding the chemical fertilizers number second they provide yeah they improve our the soil quality and thereby necessary plant uh and thus increasing the plant production number third they produce growth uh, promoting substances in the soil they or we can say they can be used in also in the semi arid area that is why the there is the scanty of rainfall that is all for today thank you beta